Now that spring is just about here and things are warming up, I want to drag these Lifey Po 4 cells out of storage. As you can see from these labels, I charged this cell to 3.65 volts back in September 2019. British date here, not American. Uh, and it's now March 2020. So it's been sat for about five months. And let's just check the voltage of this cell. Uh, 3.34 volts so uh, that's about nominal voltage isn't it so i'm pretty sure that that's okay so i've quickly just taken the voltages of all the other 11 cells so all 12 of my life epo 4 cells have been measured and as you can see they're all sat at 3.34 or 3.33 volts according to my meter and they've basically not really changed at all compared to where they were well Four months ago so yeah I'm pretty sure I've got 12 really good cells here so with 12 good cells I'm able to uh, connect three in parallel and I'll connect four in series to get a nominal voltage of about 13.2 volts and a capacity of just short of 200 amp hours with each one of these checking out at 65 to 68 amp hours each I'm going to need to connect all of these cells together. And after collating suggestions in the comments on my last video on this subject, I'm proposing not to fuse the connections between each parallel cell. But of course I will need to fuse the whole pack main output. Now I was really pleased with the copper pipe connectors I made out of, well, just standard 15 millimeter copper pipe and I squashed them between a 3D printed mold and that seemed to work really well. So a few days ago, well, I made a great deal more of these. Let me insert a little montage of me building them in the sunshine. Now one piece of advice that was repeated in the comments on the original video where I squashed this copper pipe to make these straps was that I shouldn't use these stainless steel bolts because that can cause galvanic corrosion. So rather than use these I have stumped up the brass for brass which shouldn't have that problem. Connecting these cells together needs to be done carefully and methodically because, well, if I short out one of these cells, that would be very bad. There's an awful lot of energy within them. So I've put a bit of insulation tape on the positives. Uh, I've got wearing some insulating gloves and uh, my wrench as well has been, well, insulated as much as possible. Um, ideally, I'd put a bit of heat shrink here between uh, and reduce the amount of exposed copper, uh, but I haven't got any at the moment. So for now, they're just going to be naked bus bars. So I'm going to crack on and, uh, well, I'll speed this the video up probably.
I E E E I. Apparently, didn't expect that. So here we are. Here's the pack all put together and uh, looking quite nice. I am definitely going to get some heat shrink to put around these bus bars. I do need to take this apart again. So this was just to check that everything sort of worked and my measurements were correct and the holes were in the right place and they seem to be. So yeah, I definitely need to uh, tidy this up with some heat shrink. Originally, I was going to do all the packs similar to this with a bus bar connecting all the parallel uh, cells negatives and parallel cells positives and then just have one strap to the next set but uh, recently somebody called Chris commented and said no no you should really do a full grid and his argument made quite a lot of sense so as you can see uh, at each series connection there are three straps connecting them all together making these rather funky neat looking E capital E letters so everything fits, everything's the right sort of distance, all my holes are in the right sort of place, so that's really good. I can now take this apart once more to fit that heat shrink, and of course this battery bank isn't quite ready yet because, well, it's missing a battery management system, but that's for another video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.